Hey everyone, uh, sorry my voice is a little bit different today. I just got a little bit of a uh, cold and feeling a little under the weather. So uh, it may sound a little bit different, but uh, the math is going to be the same. Alright, what we're going to want to do is find values of x that will make the denominator and the numerator 0. And then what we'll do is put them on a number line like this. And then in the intervals in between those values, we'll see if those values give us a true statement in the original equation right here. So let's go ahead and look first at x squared minus 1. And again, we're going to make it equal to 0. And what values of x would give us a 0 value here? So uh, what we can do is add 1 to both sides. Some of you would choose to factor at this point. That's fine as well. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just add 1 to both sides like this. It's an addition. And then I get x squared equals 1. And then I'll square root both sides of this. And the square root would give us a positive and negative 1 value. So I'm actually going to end up writing those separately. Just so we can see that they're two separate values, alright? And then finally, so that takes care of the denominator. We're going to want to look now at the numerator. So we have x plus 5, and this is equal to 0. And of course, what we're going to do first is subtract 5 from both sides. Uh, what this does is it isolates the x on its own side, and since... There's no coefficient of x except for phantom 1. We're done there. So we have three values. And so we're going to have to check all four intervals. So you can see <clears throat> we have a section here. We have a section here, here, and here as well. So we're going to have to test this out four times, just testing values not equal to these because we know that uh, they give us either 0 <clears throat> or an undefined value in the original equation. And uh, another thing we'll want to point out is that since this is also equal to, so this fraction here is greater than 0, but it can also be equal. Since that's the case, <clears throat> right here where x is negative 5, that's going to be included in the set. And since these values, x squared minus 1, these values give us an undefined value. They cannot be included in the set. So let's go ahead and start testing some points here. Let's start first, I guess, with uh, any, any value to the left of negative 5 on the number line. Something like, uh, I don't know, you could try negative 10, right? That's to the left of negative 5. And then we go back to the original equation as you can see here and then we're just going to replace the x's with this negative 10 so you can see they're replaced there and in the numerator we have a negative 10 plus 5 which is a negative 5 and then here in the denominator negative 10 squared is 100 minus 1 that's going to be 99 so is this value greater than or equal to 0 well since this is a negative 5 this makes the whole fraction a negative. Even though it's very small, it's very close to zero, it still does not work. So right here, I'm just going to put an x to show that it doesn't work uh, to the left of 5, okay? So that's a big warning for us. We don't want to use any of those values because it gives us an untrue statement from the equation that we started with. So let's try the next interval. And yes, they usually do skip. So if you find that this one doesn't work, usually this one will, this one won't, and this one will, okay? But we still should check these values. So what's a value between negative 1 and negative 5 that we could use for x? Perhaps something like negative 2. And with that negative 2, we'll go ahead and go in and replace the x values with a negative 2 there. And what would this give us? Well, negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3. This would be divided by negative 2 squared is a positive 4 minus 1, which also is 3. 3 over 3 is 1. Uh, so again, we're just working on the left side of this inequality. Is 1 greater than or equal to 0? 
And the answer is yes, that's true. So right here, between negative 5 and negative 1, we're going to check this off, right? Because it checks off, it works. <clears throat> and the next thing we're going to want to do is test a value between negative 1 and 1. Uh, a very easy value in between there, hopefully you realize this, is 0. So let's go ahead and replace those x's with 0. Alright, and this should be pretty easy. 0 plus 5 is 5. Over 0 squared minus 1 is a negative 1. Is 5 over negative 1? 5 divided by negative 1 greater than or equal to 0? The answer is no, and so we can see that we'll have to cross out this section as well. Okay. Again, the reason is because there's one negative, making the entire fraction negative, and there is no negative value that is greater than or equal to 0. So the last thing we need here is some value to the right of 1 that we can replace these x's with, okay? And uh, you can choose any value to the right of 1, a million, you could choose 500,000, you could choose larger numbers like those, or you could just go 1 to the right of 1, which would be 2 there, right? So let's go ahead and try 2. And we can see here, 2 plus 5 is a 7, divided by 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 is 3. That's a positive value, so when we compare it to 0, it is greater than or equal to 0. And so this section right here checks off, okay? So <clears throat> the final thing we, we see in this is that it wants the answer in interval notation. And again, negative 1 is not included in the set because it makes the original inequality undefined. 1 does the same thing, so it's not included. However, negative 5 is included because it makes our inequality 0 is greater than or equal to 0, which is true statement, okay? And this, of course, will go all the way to infinity. So when we're writing this, by the way, infinity is undefined, so we won't include that. So you may see from these, uh, this square type bracket, it means that the value that it's at is included in the set of solutions. When it's more like a regular parentheses, that means this value is not included in the set. So uh, when we write this, we simply just write those brackets as they are. And this is a union because it's either in this interval or it's in this interval right here. Okay, so. Uh, let's go and write this in. It starts at negative 5, and then it goes all the way to negative 1, which is not included. And then it starts back again at 1, and then it would go all the way to infinity. Let me try that again. And I'll just do it like this, okay? So this is our final answer. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel especially if you find these videos helpful, all right? Um, there's more videos coming out. Uh, I try to release one every day. So look for those to come out. If you have any problems from your math class that you'd like me to do for you, please send them to me. Uh, you can just comment below, and uh, I'll do those for you, all right? Uh, thanks, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.